Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little odd. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to the odd cast podcast where we talk to people who turn their passion into profession. We got a very special guest today coming to us all the way from the East Coast, Virginia. We got Jay McAvoy in the building. Jay, how are you doing? Mike, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Let's, uh, let's talk some baseball gloves today, shall we? Yeah, let's talk some baseball gloves. So, I mean, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Jay's kind of the, the, the wizard of baseball gloves, um, you know, and <laughs> see, he's... And, and and I think he's actually competing in this year's uh, uh, humble Royal Rumble. I mean that's a, that's a terrible way to start a podcast by that sort of superlative. But I mean I guess I guess I'll I'll take it. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no no dude I I, th- I mean I you know I think you you definitely kind of run the gamut of like knowledge of baseball gloves whether it's via social media or the technical aspects of it. So, I mean, I think you're able to really bridge the gap of the technical side along with the accessible side via social media. So that's kind of why I say wizard. Um, but I guess the, the interesting thing is, from your perspective, give us like a 20,000-foot level of uh, what it is you do. Uh, sure. On, on social media, first of all, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay McAvoy, Mike said. Uh, my Instagram account is pickledbeast417 from the same lot. So shout out to the same lot. Let's never die. And uh, I truly believe that uh, baseball gloves can change the world. I think that we can use baseball gloves as a vessel for impact in a number of different communities. And um, my social media account, my Instagram account, focuses on uh, acts of kindness, charitable projects, and, of course, uh, a lot of different baseball gloves. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously that comes from your inherent also love of baseball. So, um, you know, can you take us kind of through your baseball journey and how, you know, that resulted in not only the, the base, love for baseball gloves, but the love of the community and the love for giving back, which is, you know, what, what also is a huge aspect of who you are and what you do. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's, you know, we could go on for, for hours about all of those subjects. I mean, like, like most people um, that follow me and, and that I follow as well, I mean, I, I grew up loving the game of baseball. Baseball means... A ton to me, it's a character building experience. Uh, it was just great being able to ride a twin brother and play and catch in our backyard. And, you know, our, our mom taught us how to hit a curveball. And my dad, who was left handed, didn't teach us how to hit. Our mom did because my dad didn't, he wasn't a very good hitter. So uh, that, that sucked. But uh, <laughs> I grew up, I went to, uh, you know, St. John's College High School in D.C., a very good high school. Uh, and I played uh, four years of center field at Division Three Washington College. And, uh, I'm a little bit older than some folks. I'm, I'm 36, so um, you know, for all those years after I graduated in 2005, I've been playing, you know, 18 and over wood bat amateur, and it's been just a ton of fun. I, I think that uh, getting back to just the happiness of being out there on the field, uh, especially as I've gotten older and you know had a family, started a family, and my beautiful daughter Austin is five, my son Andrew is one, and being able to you know have them uh, enjoy the game of baseball and watch me enjoy it as well as been, has been just a thrill of a lifetime. My beautiful wife, Stacy, um, who comes to games when she can, is also a huge advocate for what I'm doing uh, on social media. But um, on the baseball glove front, I really started to get into them in probably the early to mid-90s uh, when I was collecting baseball cards like everybody else my age. I uh, spent all my allowance at the baseball card shop uh, just throwing it away on 89 tops and 92 score <laughs> baseball cards. It was nothing. All that junk wax, and um, I just started to notice, you know, a lot of different gloves coming out from different brands, and they were all pretty plain back then. So it's really great to see how uh, baseball gloves uh, have evolved in that, you know, uh, twenty-five year time period, and and uh, that love just continues to this day. Yeah, yeah, that that well, that must be. I mean, that's something that as you know, I've seen inherently as someone who loves baseball but doesn't really, you know, know about the intricacies of gloves. I've definitely seen them evolve from kind of a appearance standpoint, but I mean, I'm sure they've also evolved just via like functionality too. I mean, that must be true. 
Absolutely. Uh, what we've seen just in you know recent years from you know kind of gloves to bonnets and geniuses like Scott Carpenter up in Cooperstown, New York, who was acquired by Marucci Sports. Um, he works on you know tailored ergonomic custom hand slots, and uh, that is outlined to the exact specifications of your hand. So um, this one's called as I drop all my gloves. <laughs> uh, this one here is called a, a Carpenter Trade C mod. This was one of the prototypes that he made a couple of years ago, and I know you guys. You can't see this, but inside of that is a, um, a microfiber. It's a synthetic liner that is to the exact specs of my hand. So wow. in terms of the direction of where gloves are going, it's a really cool time to be kind of like really interested uh, in gloves, not only from a manufacturing standpoint, but from a performance standpoint. And seeing as gloves have evolved from, you know, just a black glove or a tan glove to providing actual performance um, specs is, is really cool. Um, that we've been, been able to see over the years. Yeah, goodness, I, I I never I never really understood how that's that's insane that they've built the, the hand slot to be like specific to your particular hands. That is absolutely. I mean, that must just improve your feel on the ball, kind of your control on the glove, the ability to maneuver with it. Uh, it just must inherently come through in your game. Absolutely, and it also is uh, significantly lighter as well because you know it's it is a synthetic material. Um, all of the stays are custom and all the padding uh, is custom in there too and it's, it's designed to be uh, lighter so you can be faster. So I mean I think that you know that's just one of many uh, developments that we've seen the rise of synthetic materials uh, in the backs of gloves to lighten them up. Um, when Super Skin came out in the late 90s, uh, Visa V, Barry Bonds, you know like these are the types of things that people really uh, notice as kind of landmark events in kind of baseball glove evolution. So uh, it's just, you know, right now it's a really fun time because social media is kind of, uh, you know, ever present. Uh, and it's really been a joy to kind of share some of the knowledge and uh, some of my opinions with um, with anybody who will listen, people like yourself. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. I think, I mean, I think what's so cool is also, like you saying, like you said, it's like your account is focused on, you know, just people giving back in general. I mean, I see a lot of, uh, you know, you do those uh, reposts of a, a good story that you'll find about, you know, a kid taking the time to, you know, buy uh, one of his teammates lunch or something like that, you know, just a small little thing that really can make someone's day. And, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff is, you know, you people think it's corny or whatever, but just to make someone's day through a small act is, is a really big deal. And if we saw, you know, more of that, the world would genuinely be a better place. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with Mike. I mean, you know, I, I believe that kindness wins. Uh, I've been preaching a lot more of, you know, making that positive kind of mindset a little bit louder on my own account. I mean, you're, you're speaking of an event that the, the guy, Kyle, is from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I put him up to that. I asked him if he would be willing to perform an act of kindness for uh, a classmate, for a teammate. Um, wow. but there are other individuals, named, you know, a guy named Cam. Um, I said, what, what are you willing you know, to do for someone else today? And uh, a lot of high school kids are... You know, some some guys are, are a little bit apprehensive because they don't really know what to do. They've never been exposed to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not to say that all high school boys are selfish. It's just that nobody's ever asked them directly, most of them, uh, to put themselves out there, be a little bit vulnerable, um, and to show that direct compassion for another person. Uh, and it really it really resonated with, with both of those individuals and uh, continues to do so to this day. So, you know, I, I, put, I, I will put the pressure on to see if you're willing to do uh, you know, something nice for someone today and, and, and every day. I think it's really important that we, we focus on, on, on that aspect too. Just, you know, we can make somebody's day from our, from our phones. I mean, what a time to be alive. <laughs> yeah. We can do some really amazing stuff right now. So why don't we do it, you know? Yeah. One of the things you said right there that was interesting is um, how doing, your, doing that and putting yourself out there is, in a sense, making yourself a little vulnerable. And I mean, sure. I think that's, that's something that, you know, it makes it such an apprehensive thing at first, but the second you put yourself out and make yourself vulnerable to, to, to helping someone, I mean, that it's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It's a terrific feeling. And, uh, it, that's uh great. yeah, but I mean, the, the vulnerability of it is something I, I really like how you said that. I mean, I, I you know, it, I wouldn't have been able to articulate that, but for talking to you and that's, that's the whole point of, you know, stuff like this. Um, I mean, just just put yourself out there and do something. You never, you never, yeah. you never know. I mean, if it's one thing that you know we've kind of has been put in front of us a little bit from brands like Athletes Brand by way of Scooter Jeanette is the the Say Hello campaign. 
um, speaking about mental health. I mean, you never, you don't know how someone's feeling. You don't know how you can impact someone's day or their life unless you do something. So, mm. you know, you might as well go and do something because sitting on the sidelines isn't the way that you should live. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's that's definitely something that I really did want to ask you about. I mean, that's you. That's something that you reiterate time and time again. Um, you know, first of all, you you definitely are great in terms of like talking about it and in regards to inspiring other people. But I feel like the secondary part of you of what you do is so important to you is putting that into action. And like you're you're you you know once you 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 know just metaphorically obviously you're walking the walk after you talk the talk. And I mean that's that's just such an important part of giving back is not just you know saying you're going to give back and sitting on the sidelines as you said. I, I think it's a, you know uh, opinions don't matter uh, mm -hmm. in that aspect. Examples do so. Uh, to me, it's important to set a good example for other people on social media to show that, you know, the, the, the Internet is a weird and sometimes terrible place. But uh, in the corner of it that I try and occupy with a really great uh, community of baseball and baseball glove lovers, um, you know, we can provide, you know, a ray of sunshine, as corny as that sounds. And, and we can really come together and do some good for, for other people and, and other communities. You know, there's been a lot of crossover we've. Uh, raised a lot of money for homeless communities in Florida and D.C. Uh, we've raised over $30,000 just on Instagram alone for um, the type 1 diabetes community uh, around the country. And we put on sports camps for, for T1D affected children uh, at the University of South Florida. We've been able to make our own run of custom baseball gloves um, through uh, Rawlings, through my friend Chad Johnson, uh, at softball fans out of Michigan. It's, I mean... I'm doing this, all of this stuff from like my house. I mean, we're making a, a nationwide impact, uh, potentially a worldwide impact. And, you know, I'm, I'm sitting around in a, in a pre shirt and shorts and we're able to, to change the world. And then we go out and then we act on that. Uh, we go to Florida, we go uh, to the conventions, we go and we see what we've done and, and how we can put it in action further. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I know the next thing, I mean, which I, we can tease a little bit. I know you're uh, going down to Puerto Rico, I believe, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so more than a game, U.S. Uh, does a lot of great international outreach, um, and Puerto Rico is not as <laughs> international. But Ryan Fitzgerald of the Salem Red Sox, the high affiliate of the Boston Red Sox, came to me and said, um, "You know, we're I'm headed down to Puerto Rico to help rebuild some fields. You know, even even to to this day, a lot of uh, the devastation of Hurricane Maria hasn't come back online." Uh, in the game of baseball and the fields that the you know the Puerto Rican community plays on is so critical to, to their culture. Um, we're going to go down there. We're going to rebuild some fields. We're going to make some some kids happy. We're going to put on some baseball camps, and um, we're going to see if we can brighten some people's day. And again, show how the game of baseball can make an impact uh, in the lives of of um, of the the future leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that's that's one thing I really think. Um, you know. You and and that being said, uh, you know a lot of our guests they've had a, a theme of really being able to, like you say, like you said, use social media basically for all the positives that it has, and kind of like occupy, as you said, their own corner and kind of create opportunities based on that. And there's a perfect example of someone reaching out to you via. Uh, did that happen via social media? Uh, it, so I met um, Ryan Fitzgerald over uh, social media about uh, two, two and change years ago. Uh, he's one of the founders of a, a small company, baseball lifestyle company called uh, Goat Gloves. Uh, they make batting gloves and, and shirts and, and hats. And um, he said, you know, I, I like what you're doing for other people. I'd like to uh, give you some hats and batting gloves and you can do whatever you want with them. Um, and, you know, when I, I met him for the first time this year and he was like, look, we, we have to do this project together and I, I couldn't be more excited uh, and just internally just grateful for kind of what social media has been able to, to bring into my life and, and really provide a lot of like personal fulfillment um, that I never would have otherwise had or and I definitely didn't expect it. I mean this, I've been yeah. on Instagram for five years and it's, it's been, I mean, it's been like very fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, we were chatting the other day, but you said, uh, a Correct me if I'm wrong. You said it started out as just kind of being like, "Oh, this would be a creative outlet." I, you know, I wanted to have something that I could like, you know, focus on and you know, kind of get away and like be able to, you know, put my creative creativity into my love for baseball and my love for giving back. 
kind of all into one space and like this is what it became. Yeah. I, yeah. And we were saying before, I mean, this baseball glove thing just kind of made sense. You yeah. Know, this is something that I've, I've loved since I was very small. Um, and not just like the game of baseball, the nuance of baseball, how much pine tar is on a player's bat, how much tape they're using, mm -hmm. uh, what model bat, which came a little bit later. Um, you know, the, the, my wife, asked me to start this account because uh, when I became a father for the first time with, with Austin in 2014, I was playing baseball five, six, seven days a week, you know, just with reckless abandon. And the day that she was born was the best day of my life, except that meant the baseball stopped. And, and not in like a selfish way. I love my daughter unconditionally, mm -hmm. but my, you know, identity was wrapped up in being a team captain, a, a team leader. And that my reliability kind of fell off a little bit. So I was kind of, you know, disappointed in myself for, for getting to that place. And I, I wasn't happy all the time. And my wife said, you're going to be at home with our daughter. She works late in DC and said, you need to find a creative outlet to call your own. Uh, and that's really just when it started. And just fast forward. I mean, I'm, I've always been like a happy guy. I've always been, you know, an optimistic guy. Um, on social media and, and right now, but like it wasn't always that way. It's because of partially because of this account, because of my wife, because of you know the community coming together and rallying behind causes that is really just. I mean, you'll never get the smile off my face ever. I mean, it's I love it. It's I mean, what a, what a great time. I mean, it, it's it's truly been uh, wonderful to meet people, to talk to people like yourself, um, to be involved in a bunch of different projects where we can help people. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really been great. It's really been great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really terrific. And you know, I mean, I in the short time I've been on Instagram, I mean, the baseball community has shown so much love. And I mean, I you know, I I don't really talk. I talk to people who know about the nuances, but I, I, you know, I, I observe them and I know a little about them, but you know, the amount of love I've gotten from the baseball community is so awesome. And I, you know, big shouts out to everyone in the baseball community. Who's, I mean, I really feel like it's a positive community. And like you said, there's something about it where everyone's kind of looking out for each other and everyone has like this cool niche where they're fitting in and, and really, you know, doing, doing awesome stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I know, I know bad guys. I know, you know, glove guys. I mean, there's people that specialize in uh, pro issue apparel, uh, game used equipment. I mean, you know, we all kind of come together. We all just have that, you know, that mutual passion for uh, our thing. And being able to talk about that stuff uh, is really just a, just a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. you know, and again, you know, we would not otherwise have been able to do that. That's never going to be lost on me. Is that you know, my friend Andy in Buffalo, New York, my friend Dutch uh, in Oklahoma City, we never would have crossed paths at any point uh, if it weren't for, you know, you know these platforms. And, um, I, I mean, it just, it's just, so, it's just, it's honestly just so much fun. And that's, you know, it's always been that way. And, you know, it, that's, that's never, never going to change. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, you know, one thing you, you said to me that really struck a chord that I wanted to come back to is, you said, uh, you know, baseball, like being a captain of a team, you know, playing as much as you were playing. I mean, baseball is a sport that requires reliability from your teammates. And, I mean, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of a dichotomy of reliability in a sport where hitting three out of ten is, you know, all-star and theoretically could be, you know, Cooperstown if you do it across, you know, a span of ten seasons, you know, 15 seasons. Um, so you have that, like, reliability um, but there's also that, you know, inconsistency that you have to kind of overcome. And I've always found that that's what makes baseball such a great metaphor for life about, you know, not really necessarily, it's not about getting down. It's about how you respond to getting knocked down and what you learn from it. Yeah. I mean, I think that you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's, it's, it's not about, you know, what happens. It's about how you respond to what happens, mm -hmm. right? It's not, and what you do next and your follow on actions. I mean, Striking out is okay. Missing a fly ball is okay. I mean, in the moment, it's not going to feel okay. But <laughs> at the end of the day, for people like you and I, we, we have the ability to play a game um, at, at our level. And, I mean, you know, you had asked me before, you know, what inspires me about uh, the game of baseball. And, uh -huh. and I don't think that the game of baseball, as pure and beautiful as it is, inspires me. Hmm. The concept of being alive to play is what inspires me. 
I think that people need to take a level up and realize that they have the ability to play baseball, even if you're not as good. But if it's fun for you, so many people that I know that played at the Division One at the minor league level, they fell out of love with baseball because they were grinding every single day. They got as far as they got, and then they, they fell off of a cliff, and they blamed baseball for it. So I'm just happy to be alive and able to play it. There are so many circumstances that exist where you would not be able to play baseball. You tear up your shoulder. I know a lot of guys that have reconstructive shoulder surgery. They can't, they can't throw with their sons and daughters anymore. That's terrible. I would feel awful about that. I would learn how to throw left hand. That's for sure. <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know, when it comes to, like, inspiration from the game of baseball, it's the people inside of the game of baseball that are inspired. It's going to be your parents, your teammates, your coaches. They're going to have such a huge impact on you. Again, just like baseball gloves, the game of baseball itself is the vehicle for that inspiration, right? So wow. it's always about the people that are involved in that process. And I think that if we took a step back and said, I woke up this morning, everything is good, and went about our days. I think that there would be a lot more positivity in the world, and I think that there would be uh, a lot more, you know, a lot better conversations than, I, than some of us have, especially with social media. <laughs> that's no, that's really deep. I, I, I've never heard someone really articulate it like that. It's more happy to have the ability to pursue your passion, or happy to just get the chance to play ball, or like. Like it, it's that's that's really that's on a deeper level. That's more of an appreciation of life, and then uh, you know what whatever you within that you find your passion, then you can do it. But you have to have that initial appreciation of just being before even. Kind well, of I mean, you say it yourself, Mike. I mean, if you're saying that baseball is a metaphor, you know, for life, why don't we take a look at life itself? Because yeah. if that means that baseball is that microcosm, let's take a look at the macro and say, you know what? I'm honestly like legitimately happy that I get to go outside and take BP today, you know, I get to, to run around and, and, and play a game where I'm, I'm kind of mildly good at, you know, yeah. I wasn't going to be a professional baseball player, but I enjoyed, you know, every inning that I was able to play in college and to this day. And every time I'm able to go outside, I'm happy. And every day I'm able to have great conversations with people like you. I'm happy. You know what I mean? When, when, when work is tough, when life is tough, you got to look at it and flip it around and be like, I'm still living. It's okay. It could be worse. I'm happy to be here. Uh, and I think that your relationships with other people will improve. Your relationship with yourself will improve. And I think that that's like the mental health angle that I think that people kind of miss sometimes. It starts here and here. You know, like you keep focusing on wanting to be positive. That's a backwards law because you're going to end up wanting so much to be positive that it's going to end up draining you negatively. So if we, if we focus on always being positive, that doesn't work. You just have to have that conversation with yourself. So I, I thought we were talking about baseball clothes, but I guess we're not doing that anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, this is, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, this is the ideal, like, you know, we're, we're bridging the gap kind of, I really, I really, that's, that's a very deep point. I mean, it's, that's, that's kind of being honest with yourself and being self-aware seems to be really important to that kind of mentality, I think. I think that that really helps a lot with the, you know, the empathy with the, the acts of kindness is because, you know, you know, I worked. I grew up in a with my my brother and my parents uh, in a lower middle class family in PG County, Maryland. You know, we didn't have a lot. We went a couple of Christmases without, like, you know, and we're kind of asking why, but we didn't look at the time because we were, you know, little brat kids about what we did have. And what we did have was we had, you know, food on the table every night. My our mother is at the at the time a terrible cook, so <laughs> but there was food there. My our dad was home. You know, every night at 5 to 5.30, he woke up early in the morning to take us to school. They sacrificed everything to put us in a better school district than the one that we were in. And we didn't realize that when we were growing up. But as we got older and matured, we absolutely saw the sacrifices that, that they were making for us. And, and you, I'm, I'm thankful for everything that I have. And I want to make sure that other people are aware that they should be thankful for everything that they have and not focus on what they don't have. And at the end of the day, I get asked a lot, like, Hey, your house is on fire. Like, what's the one glove that you bring with you? What glove do you get in the hypothetical? And I can't even joke about like the hypothetical is that they all stay, they all burn. It's just a thing. There's nothing. They 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 all go. We can. It doesn't matter if you can't replace it because it's just a, a physical thing. You can't take it with you when you leave this world. Don't worry about it. And that's wow. the mentality you have to have. It's not about like. You know, clutching on to that one thing because you just got to have it. 
release that. Just be happy that you have a blood period. I'll take care of the rest. Dude. I'll make sure that you get one. You know I, what I mean? That's the way that I approach it. Well, I love that. I love that. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's a great answer. I mean, that, first of all, that's, that's a great answer to that question. I mean, to hear the glove guys say, I want all my gloves to go up and flips. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the thing. Like, yeah, there's a lot of like cool stuff that I've got. Like a lot of yeah. stuff is not like retail. It's a lot of prototypes. It's a lot of one-offs. It's a lot of custom stuff. You know, it's, it means a lot because like this one was designed by the glove community as a thank you for like the work that I've done for charity. And this one was designed and this one was designed by my wife who is also very active in the design process because I can't design anything. But my wife does a great job working with it with the gloves and, and even my daughter designed one that was probably better than anything I can do. She was <laughs> four at the time. So, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's a family affair too, which is, which is great. But like, yeah, I mean, you know, people think that I'm a glove guy. Like I'm still, I'm still a person. Right. And these are just like things. This is, this is the way that I can kind of make my way into your life to have an impact. Right. Yeah. I'll make my way in there because baseball, because of baseball gloves, uh, you know, and a lot of charitable projects that I'm associated with. And I look to get everybody else involved. That's why I will ask you to perform an act of kindness. I will, I will ask you to be on my design team for when we design a glove for the type 1 diabetes community. I get more people involved. This isn't about me. It's so much bigger than that. And I want to get other people to feel the same joy that I have, you know, working with these companies and working with, with other nonprofits to, to get involved too. So everybody should feel that. Um, that level of kind of like being special and, and doing something really cool, you know, via social media. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And like, you know, that might, this might be the title of the episode, but what a time to be alive, as you said. Um, you know, I, Absolutely. Think, I think that that's just a really good way to kind of look at everything. I mean, what a time to be alive. Um, you know, just inherently, if we kind of just think that and like, like you said, you know, material position, possessions are just that. But, um, you know, the gloves are like your means to the end in a way, you know, like their baseball is like the means to the end, the means to, you know, get people involved, the means to get to help, you know, create the change in the world that you wish to see. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. I, um, are, I, you know, I wanted to ask, are you planning uh, any, uh, you know, other uh, international stuff, any other international stuff in the works in the, in the scaffolding yet? Yeah, I mean, we'll see where uh, the Puerto Rico trip goes. Um, you know, more than again, U.S., they're, they're run by some really, really great people in California and Georgia, and they're looking at going to Palau. They're looking at going to South Africa. Wow. Um, so, I mean, there's, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'll be, you know, kicking off those projects with them, but um, that, that crew really resonated with me about making an impact and using baseball as the medium to do it, uh, knowing that I'm kind of a level down focusing on baseball gloves. They just kind of like the way that I approach uh, just life in general, uh, just having like a lust for it and a, a zeal for, for helping others. And uh, if they'll have me, I'll, you know, I'll be on the next plane to Johannesburg. But, you know, I'm just kind of, there's always something to do. There's always something to do at home. There's always something to do away. Uh, and I want to make sure that I, I get to any and all of it and, you know, just kind of do, do as much as I can for the time that I'm here. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I know we're not, you know, numbers aren't really, you know, we're not talking like whatever numbers, numbers, but I mean, shoot, haven't you given away something like 200 gloves on your page? Not quite. It's getting up there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's probably, it's probably in the, it's probably closer to 200 than 150. Wow. Um, you know, when I started Instagram again, like five years ago, um, and I didn't have any followers and I was like, you know, I could really make a, an impact using this platform. And I gave gloves away before all that, like yeah. before social media. And, um, I found a, a kid that was kind of local to me. He went to a, a rival high school, and I, I'm obviously a lot older than him now. And I wanted to give him this glove. It was an 11 and a half inch Wilson Superskin OTIF, like six finger pitcher's glove. I really liked it. New with tags. Give it to the kid. And uh, you know, he's like, I can't accept it. I got to talk to my mom. I was like, Let me talk to your mom. I talked to his mom. His name is Nick. Uh, just a great family. The eye-opening experience to me is like I was asking for a person's address, <laughs> right? So like there are there are some inherent issues with like trying to do this sometimes. Like you don't want to look like a creep, but like you know people that know me at this point know that my intentions are good. Uh, but back then, like who knows? But like I, I talked to his mom uh, on the phone. She was like, "Okay, cool." Uh, first thing that happened was Nick blocked me once he got that glove, and and uh, I was like, oh, "Okay." So social media is kind of cruel and unforgiving, but that's not gonna. That's not going to stop me. And I made sure that 
you know, I've been giving away about, you know, between two and four gloves a month, every month. Um, there's no quota or anything, but, you know, gloves, bats, gear, you know, other companies will donate stuff like New Balance. And um, I'll just, I, I'll just give it all away, man. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I keep a bunch of the, the rare stuff um, just because there's a lot of that stuff is hard to find. Um, but, you know, like I said, Mike, you want something, I can, I'll send you a glove, man. That's oh, not, sorry, man. Not, that's an honor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lefty. <laughs> I do have a lefty. It's probably not as good of a quality, um, but I mean, this is what we can do. Like on your show, you can, I can give you a glove, and then you can give it away to somebody. I mean, like that's to, to understand like what what that's like. I mean, you know, I don't do like a lot of you know giveaways on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I suck at those. I'm not very great, very good at self promoting. So I really just want to you know, talk to people and cultivate relationships with people. I don't really care about follower count that much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really just not good at, you know, gathering followers. My, usually my only hashtag is stay grassy, which is what I say all the time. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's so much more fun not worrying about that because yeah. I'm not validated personally by some sort of quantifiable metric for, like, all the Russian porn bots uh, that follow me, you know, it's not, it's just not important. Hey, that's my follower base. Come on, man. No, <laughs> it's like 60% of mine. I, I swear. Um, but it's okay. It's well, I, that's, this is a great time. Actually, I can, can, do you want to explain? Uh, I'm sure you've done it before. Do you want to explain those stay grassy? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a simple one. I mean, stay grassy is, you know, work hard, have fun. Don't take anything in this world for granted. Uh, it means, you know, lay out for the ball, get dirty, um, you know, take chances. Uh, and most importantly, understand that you exist right now. And there's not going to be another you. I'm a twin, and I grew up with that comp complex of like, well, there's another me. He's sitting right over there. Wow. But that's not true. We are completely different people. And there's only going to be one Mike. There's only going to be one Jay. And enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's really why I kind of preach the what time to be alive is just if anybody's out there listening to this, which there are, Mike, you're, you've just grown in exponentially in popularity in recent months. I think it's great to see what you're doing, uh, which is a good time to be on the show, right? But, like, <laughs> if you're listening, understand that there's not going to be another you. You are unique. You are special. You are awesome. And go do something awesome for someone else today that might not feel as awesome. That's, that's what's important. That's the full circle of it. That's the full circle of it because, I mean, like, I think – I think for you, I mean, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think for you, like inspiring someone to do something for someone else or to take that risk of putting their talk into action of helping someone else is more important than any monetary value that you could put on anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, this stuff that I, you know, like, you know, you and I will have one simple term because for the most part, I give without any expectation whatsoever. But I ask very politely, if you would be willing to perform an act of kindness for a stranger without the possibility of reciprocation. What I'm asking for is love for love's sake. I'm asking for buying three pizzas for a group of homeless people. I'm asking you to donate clothing to Salvation Army. Drop off, buy a bunch of cans of food and drop them off at a food drive. You know, be comfortable getting uncomfortable for that one moment and see how you feel because those moments can change your life. So I'll give you a baseball glove that's, but if that can be the vessel that gets you off the couch to go and do something for that one moment, it, it's honestly, that's the type of thing where you could have a small splash with a baseball glove and a vast ripple effect that we don't even know the ramifications yet. And, and maybe one day it'll come back to me, but I don't really care. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Throw it all out there, put a lot of hooks in the ocean and, you know, There'll be a bite, and, and somebody's somebody's world's going to get changed. Yeah, that's super powerful. I mean, I think I think one of the big drives. I mean, obviously for you, just inherently hearing the story of how it came to be, um, hearing you know the drive and motivation. I think obviously your family is super inspiring to you. I mean, your wife and your kids. You know, whether it's you know designing it, just being super supportive, or just like you know, like you know, just being there to inspire you seems to be a huge driving force behind what you do. Yeah, I mean, my wife uh, really puts up with a lot, um, <laughs> and you know, there's there's a hundred baseball gloves in this basement. 
all over the place. There's 40 bats over there from various companies. This this whole <laughs> this whole entire basement and even upstairs is just a nightmare uh, all the time. And um, you know, to that end, I mean, as important as my family is, and, and my life is just, I mean, so tolerant. I mean, last last year, in terms of like the glove community, people that, that have been traveling through the DC area, they've stopped by the house. So to her, like complete strangers are stopping by the house for like hours at a time to just go into our basement and then they'll come up and I'll give them a glove to take with them. And then like, that's the end of that. And like, they're, they're, my wife was like, who is that? They're like, Oh, that was Sam. He's from Pennsylvania. And then the, I'll, she'd be like, well, who's, who's that guy and his family that came? I'm like, that's Milan. He's from the Netherlands. And the last time that we did that, um, Dutch Whitaker, 405 Baseball, who's one of my best friends, uh, we've known each other around here for five years, he came and lived at our house for four months. <laughs> so my, my wife comes home, and she's like, who's that? I'm like, that's Dutch. He's going to live in our basement for the summer. You know, so like, you don't talk about tolerance. I mean, Stacy has been more than a saint yeah. uh, throughout all of this, but she also knows how excited I get about this stuff and the, 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 the ability to help other people the ability to sit down and have like conversations like this, uh, it just it really does mean everything. She notices it too. Like, there's more pep in my step knowing that like I'm going to talk to somebody about baseball gloves, knowing somebody's coming over. Like, you know, it, it's just there's a there's an electricity in the house. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, it's 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 just going to be inherent because it's like you're you're getting to talk about you're getting to do you. You know, I mean that's you know. Yeah, and there's so much stuff too that like happens like away from social media. You know, I mean. We always feel like, you know, we are what we post, but we're not. We're everything in between those moments. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That's just a photo of one moment in time. Some people take some great pictures. I'm not one of those people. I don't really care about quality of image. I just use use my phone. I use this platform as a way to, to tell glove stories, to, to, to make an impact. And, you know, it's everything that happens in between. I'm a firm believer that, you know, when you're born, there's a date. And when you die, there's a date. But what's in between? There's a small dash between your birth date and the date that you passed away. That dash is the culmination of your entire life. It's all the stories, all of the memories that, and the impressions that you've left on other people. What is your dash going to say? What are people going to say about your dash? And I, I'm just, I want to do as much as I can for people in between that second date. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's super important. Um, you know, I think, I mean, that, it's, that's, that's very powerful. I've heard the dash, but I've, I've never heard it articulated in such a way. And, um, you know, I definitely, I definitely, um, yeah, dude, big, big credit, big credit to the toleration, tolerant, the tolerant, ever tolerant oh. Stacy. <laughs> oh. And, you know, and, and my kids too, because, you know, like they see all this stuff and, you know, they're very interested in it and I, I just can't wait to share it with them. And my, my daughter is, could be playing t-ball soon and my son actually carries around a full-length baseball bat he's one <laughs> and he just carries it around he just drags it like a caveman carrying a club and just drags <laughs> it along with him like tearing up our floor and like he doesn't swing it yet which is which is fine uh but once he does i mean he's, he's going to break everything so i have that to look forward my daughter was was an angel my my son is the culmination of any sin that i've created in this life or any previous ones i may have lived and it's you know he's he's going to be special he's going to be something special that's awesome so. that's awesome i you know i, I definitely i definitely want to ask uh, you know briefly like Getting back a little bit specifically to the gloves, um, how how yeah, sure. <laughs> how cool has it been within like the glove world of getting to work with you know not not even like you know the super big but from everything from the super big to smaller kind of boutique glove companies that uh, whether it's come to you and give you a prototype or say hey Jay can I have some feedback on this or like how how fun has that aspect been like and that I feel like that's maybe a behind the scenes thing. Uh, that, you know, you know, is pretty cool for you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is not, like, to be able to do that, this is not the place where I expected to be mm -hmm. uh, at all. I consider myself to be, you know, well-versed and educated on 
a lot of different brands, a lot of different patterns, and kind of the evolution of all those as we talked about before. Um, but you know, when I first started, I kind of showed that I can articulate key points and then also kind of you know, give good feedback publicly. Um, so the companies came to me, uh, like you know, the Wilsons, the Rawlings, the Eastons, the Maruchis, uh, SSK most recently, um, PB Pro, Dynamis Pro. You know, a lot of companies, and they're very interested in what I have to say. And I, I, it's all a very, it's a huge privilege uh, to be able to do that. Now, you know, you don't, you know, you don't get to that point by being a sycophant. You know, you uh, like, hey, listen, like, this may not be like a pretty conversation, but I would much rather be you know, constructively critical privately than other people be very overtly negative publicly. So, mm. you know, they'll send me something, I'll kind of take it apart, look at the components, break it in, play catch with it. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll get those gloves and then I'll send them to someone else uh, so they can enjoy it. And, um, you know, those companies are cool with that. And um, it's really been uh, a thrill. I mean, in, in 2017, Rawlings brought myself and, and a bunch of other people out to visit their factory and um, visit the Rawlings facility and wow. kind of give us the, or just a, you know, the king and queen treatment. And, you know, what was really disappointing about that is we didn't lock ourselves in a conference room for 12 hours a day and only talk gloves, right? That's all I, that's all I wanted to do when we were out there. Um, but, you know, they wanted to go and see a baseball game. And I'm like, I mean, I can, you know, that's great. But like, you know, more glove talk, please. I mean, that's why we're here. So. Uh, but to, to get those opportunities with those companies has been um, unexpected, surreal, and and just just fantastic. It's been um, it's been great, and I'm I'm really thankful that people value my opinion there, um, and and hopefully we continue to work and improve gloves in the future. Yeah, yeah. Can I? I mean, get, like, just for someone who's maybe a newbie, like, what is what is it? I know this is going to change based on probably weather conditions, probably what type of baseball you're playing, what position you're playing, obviously, but you know, let's say like you're playing your favorite position. Uh, what kind of do you look for in a glove on a, on a kind of normal day? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a center fielder. Uh, uh -huh. and so I use a 12 and three quarter inch, uh, outfielders gloves. And, um, for me, myself, I use uh, a Rawlings A2K and, um, but there are all kinds of different patterns that I've used, whether or not it's a, a fastback, which is closed or, you know, different web styles. Um, there's, there's a ton of different ones out there. So, you know, whether it's a single post or an H-Web, we can talk about. If I'm going to do a consultation with you, I want to know about what you've used, what you like, and what you don't like. And then I'm going to be able to put together, you know, and your price point, and put together a recommendation for you. I do this a lot with parents um, uh, because they'll come to me and like, hey, I'm looking for a glove. I've got $100, $200, $300 to spend, maybe $50 to spend, uh, and I'm looking for value and durability. Um, and, you know, based on my expertise and my experience with a lot of different gloves, infield and outfield, uh, I can provide a pretty comprehensive evaluation of, of the market. So, you know, nobody pays me to do anything. So, like, there's no bias. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love all of the companies uh, pretty equally. So, you know, that's really where the, the fun is. Um, and I think, long story short, I, I'm an outfielder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. So it's a lot of fun to... To have those conversations and um, yeah, whatever position you play, I mean, trends are are moving in various directions. Like larger infielders' gloves at the professional level, we're seeing that trickle down. And uh, you know, the advent of the Dustin Pedroia model, the DP15, changed the landscape of youth baseball um, because Dustin Pedroia's hands are smaller. So the A2000, a pro stock glove at around the $250 price point, is now accessible by size to younger kids. So that's what they uh, want, and it really, you know, younger kids are getting a chance at, you know, premium um, uh, gloves, as opposed to, you know, that whatever name brand, you know, glove that's made of plastic, um, they're using, you know, something like this at, at, at the youth level. Wow. Is that is that what we typically, is that typical to uh, gloves? We see it in the majors, and then it has a trickle-down effect eventually that reaches the youth systems? I think with some with some products, yes, especially with the Dustin Pedroia, the DP15 model. Uh -huh. um, but you know, we're seeing. I think this year we're seeing a lot more uh, single piece, like one piece webs, uh, because of you know, Javi Baez continues to make plays, and uh, we've seen Machado's uh, one piece web, and I think that we're seeing that reflected in uh, a lot of people doing their their custom plugs 
Um, even the one that we did for charity this year is, is a, a one piece because we're trying to capitalize on that uh, as well. So, you know, we see enough of it on television. It just kind of seeps in your, sub, your, your uh. subconscious mind. And when, you know, and again, when I'm talking about like what a time to be alive, when I was growing up, there was no custom glove. There. <laughs> there, there, your glove was either black or it was tan. And yeah. that was it. And that, that's what you get. And you don't get upset. And that was fine. But now, with the custom revolution for everything from, you know, gloves to cleats and everything in between and all the stuff that, like, Vickis and Marucci and those companies are doing for their baseball bats, for Players Weekend, the fact that we have a Players Weekend, um, you know, individuality from an aesthetic standpoint is really coming to the forefront. Uh, and we're seeing all kinds of crazy styles. So those trends just kind of go all over the place at times. Um, and you never know what's going to catch on. So, But yeah. usually it does start at the top. No, that's interesting. I mean, that's super interesting, though. I mean, I, I so single web versus single web would mean just like the, there's one palette where the webbing would be, right? Like, yeah, I mean, so I know this, this is this is good video right here. Me bending over, <laughs> so this, so this is the one piece. Oh wow! Right here, and you know, you're seeing one of the older Manny Machado gloves, and then also like Javi Baez's SSK. Uh -huh. um, they're a company on the rise as well in the last couple of, uh, probably just the last 18 months or so. Um, you know, we've seen this one in Hobby's model. And, um, you know, this is something that's kind of growing in, in, in popularity. And um, Wilson obviously has uh, the market cornered on the DP-15, which is a great pattern um, for, for, for men, women, and children of all ages. And, um, yeah, it's just some of the webs provide a little bit more stability. Some of them... Um, can get a little bit looser quicker. Some people like that. So it's really just, if I'm talking to you about gloves, I want to know what you like. Yeah. So it's not about what I like. It's about what you like and then my experience with different stuff to tell you what might be the best um, based on my my experience with those gloves. So yeah, and that, that's I mean, why I have a lot of them because it results in a lot of experience. Exactly. Like, and that certainly helps. I mean, just in terms of like position wise and price point wise and just the differentiation between brands and styles. I mean, that's inherently going to play into that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's just really important. It's like, it's not about like that one, like cool thing. It's just about like a culmination of experience. Right. So it doesn't matter if somebody sends me like a prototype because I, I can't, I can't, you know, consult with a parent on that prototype <laughs> as an example, because they can't buy it. Yeah. Right? So, you know, I will buy the stock gloves um, and then I'll, that, those are the ones that I usually give away because, you know, now that I've gotten my knowledge with it, I, you know, it's kind of on to the next one and then maybe we'll get a, so an act of kindness out of it. So that's pretty much been the, the workflow over the last couple of years. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, it's, 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 it's so cool. I really, I, I also really, I mean, we didn't hammer on it uh, a bunch, but it was really interesting how you were, you know, talking about kind of that individuality and then how you, you, you have a twin brother. So it's really interesting how, you know, you have the twin brother and also you were able to become such an individual in your own regard. So, I mean, I'm sure that that's, you know, I mean, I think everyone has a struggle to become their own individual, but then you have that other hurdle of like, Hey, there's someone who was born damn near the same time as you. <laughs> yeah. Look, it, it, like I said before, I mean, it all starts here and all starts here. Yeah. You know, it's all about you know, like how you, view yourself yeah you know and, and, and if you don't think you're good enough you're not you know you can't you can't fall into those those negative mindset traps and um you know it, it's okay to be different it's okay to be um an individual that's that's how revolutions happen so yeah you know it's important like, and, and falling in line isn't necessarily a bad thing you know uh i work a nine to five job that's not that's not a bad thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. um that's that's not like supremely irregular um, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with being an individual. There's nothing wrong with following and leading, uh, during the course of your life. They're, they're, you know, hopefully everybody lives a really long time and lives a very fulfilling life. So there's always going to be ebb and flow. Yeah, absolutely. And, oh yeah, I wanted, I wanted to also ask, are we going to get any more of the, uh, the bus stop series, man? I loved that. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. Um, so that was for a class that I was taking in DC. Uh, in February and March, and, and every day, you know, I was really stressed about the, this class um, because it was new, it was different, uh, it was changing kind of my career trajectory, mm -hmm. and I was really nervous. And um, so instead, I brought a different glove uh, every day. Um, 
I would put it in my backpack and then I would just kind of break it out and uh, somewhere along my walking route uh, in DC. And um, I guess that kind of caught on a little bit. It was fun to do. So if I'm ever anywhere for like a set extended amount of time, I'm absolutely bringing, I'm absolutely going to do, do it. So well, let's get, yeah. let, let's get it pop and let's get the San Diego series. Let's get you out here, man. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you know, it's just because it's sunny here today. doesn't mean it's, you know, it's anywhere close to, to San Diego. It's usually it's, Humid and miserable, and not worth going outside. That's so. hilarious. We're overcast here today, so I mean, it's very that's that's super it's, that, fun. That's a, it's a bad it's a bad day in California. <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely. <laughs> so I mean, we've run the gamut. We've gone we've gone about fifty one minutes. I definitely want to give you the opportunity to you know give uh, you know any quick shout outs. You know, again, let people know where they can find you. Um, and then I uh, kind of you know that last advice of anyone. Uh, you know, just the summary. We've we've you know we've talked about it ad nauseum for sure, but. Um, you know, just any, any advice out there for the viewers or listeners of uh, how they can turn their passion into reality? I mean, so one, you can find me on Instagram at Pickle the Beast 417. Um, I think that, I mean, that's a tough question, but I think that your passion is your reality. So it's, you know, go get it no matter what it is. I mean, if, if you wake up thinking about something all day, but you're doing something else, you should probably not do that thing. You should probably do the thing that you're always thinking about. Because everybody's going to use the ad as well. If you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. But if, if you know, turning your passion into a reality, like, you're talking more on, like, the monetization, right? Your passion is your reality. <laughs> like, that, that's just the way that you exist, thinking about that thing and doing that thing all the time. Yeah. You know, figuring out a way to do that all the time is really where it's difficult. But if you're if you're willing to put in the time um, to seek knowledge to be able to get better at your craft, no matter what it is, I, you talk to a lot of different brewers, a lot of different breweries, and I think that like those guys are constantly mastering and learning about their craft. I don't know everything that there is about baseball gloves. I'm constantly learning, and wow. you know, life is just a lot of continuous learning and and. Um, you know, trying to pass that along as well and um, kind of leaving breadcrumbs of knowledge along the way. And, um, you know, there's, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Always know, be confident in what you know, but be just as confident in what you don't know. That's really important. Um, basically, just so you don't talk out your ass. <laughs> 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 um, uh, as far as like shout outs, I mean, there's too many of them. There's been a lot of really amazing people that have, that are in my life that have, you know, even have come and gone. Uh, that have made this account so worthwhile and fulfilled, you know, my life. Um, again, you know, guys like uh, Devin Coley, Andy Hassler, and, and Dutch Whitaker um, were part of the collaboration project with uh, Chad Johnson from Michigan this year. We've been able to do so much for charity. We've been able to do so much for other communities. Uh, I'm going to keep it rolling. There's a lot of stuff you're just not going to see that happens on my Instagram account because I kind of suck still and, like, really just putting that content out there mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the internet is ruthless and I don't want to come off as like some selfish jerk and have that narrative. But at the same time, you know, that other part of me doesn't care because, you know, it's, it's about how I feel about myself, you know, not how you think, because, think of me because that's, that's reputation, right? Yeah. You know what my character is, what you think of me is my reputation. But so I'm, I'm strong in character and, and that's, that's what matters. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And uh, that's a terrible way to end a podcast, by the way. <laughs> you said I have, no, strong, I have a strong character. No, you, oh, no, no, you have a weak constitution. That's now we terrible. have, now we have you saying it's a terrible start and no, terrible that's finish. A terrible, like, do the hour over again. Start it over again. Reset. <laughs> uh, hello, folks. Here we are now. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, no, that was a great yeah. conversation. I truly do appreciate your time, Jay. And uh, so, Mike, this been this been great. I mean, this has been absolutely. Fantastic! I, I couldn't. I mean, it, it's awesome. It's yeah. Awesome. Well, dude, more you know, more to come. I mean, I think I think I think we can collaborate on more great stuff. And uh, and you know what? I'm I'm gonna go out and you know I'm not even gonna tell anyone what it is, but I'm gonna go out and do something for someone today. If I'm just just while I'm walking around, if I can just figure it That's out. That's it. It's so easy. People think that it's like difficult to like go and give. No, don't. Like a lot of times, it's time. Like. Hold the door open for somebody. Exactly. You know, you know, even the one thing that I do that my wife hates because it takes up time <laughs> is that every time we go to the grocery store, I always fix the carts that are outside. 
<laughs> because I always put all those carts back into order. It did, it did, you know, into rows between the tiny carts and the, the regular yep. family size carts because everybody just kind of throws them in there yep. and they walk away. Somebody's got to pick that stuff up and put it back together. And if I'm out there, that's the one thing that I, I always do, you know. Uh, I used to be able to always pay somebody's toll at the, you know, at the Maryland state line, but I have an easy pass now, so I, I kind of just drive through it as fast as I can. So, <laughs> I, you know, there's, there's other ways that we can, we can make a very small difference uh, uh, in, in somebody's day. It, it means a lot to somebody. Uh, and even if it doesn't, you know, it, it'll, it'll feel good when you do it, I promise you. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, I mean, I, I truly do appreciate the time, and I appreciate what you do, and I, I can't wait to see uh, Puerto Rico, and I can't wait to see, you know, what's next on the horizon. And, uh, Thanks, man. Yeah, and, you know, more to come, more to come from you, more to come from me, and more to come from both yeah. of us. So uh, I, I think, it's, you know, importantly, too, is that you don't sell yourself short. You're on the rise as well, and, and I think that what you're doing for other people, showcasing uh, ordinary people like me trying to do extraordinary things, and I, I really appreciate what you're doing, too. Um, for the, your podcast community, for uh, the country, and trying to showcase just regular people doing awesome stuff. And uh, so thank you for, for giving me the, the opportunity to come on today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you to all our listeners and viewers. Another episode of the Oddcast Podcast, where we talk to people who are turning their passion into profession and passion into paychecks. Jay McAvoy, Pickle the Beast. Uh, hit him up for all your glove info needs, recommendations, and you know, go out and do something for someone today, whether it's hold a door or pay someone's toll or, you know, something gigantic. But it can be something as small as just saying please and thank you to someone who doesn't hear it often. So appreciate all the listeners. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Stay grassy. <laughs> and stay grassy. <laughs> Let's get a little weird. Let's get a little odd. Those sounds you like to hear. We got it going on. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast. It's the odd cast.